Do you let your constraints define you or do you define your constraints? That'd be a little bit of a play on words, but think about it just a little bit because one of those statements holds a lot more power and that's what we're gonna talk about. Hey, I'm John Copeland and this is Architecting You, where we talk about how to design the life you want. Every design project out there has constraints, whether it's a toaster oven or a house. Take a house, for example. If you're thinking about constraints on a house, you certainly might talk about budget. Seems like a logical one. But then, of course, the size of the lot, zoning restrictions, historic preservation, which could cover everything from materials to color. All of those things combined are constraints upon the project. So many things that we would apply to a building site, we could apply to ourselves and things we may or may not do in our lives. The lot size or the zoning restrictions are similar to a job that might be too far away for us, or it doesn't give us enough money, or I don't have enough time in the day to actually get to do the thing that I really wanna do, or I don't have the budget to make it happen. If we decide, forget it, we're not doing this project anymore, the lot doesn't fit 60 feet wide of a house, and I really want 60 feet wide, so forget it, we're not doing it, nope. Well, I mean, I know it sounds a little ridiculous when I would say it now, but that's often what we do in our life. We just decide to put it all down and stop because one thing doesn't work. If you like this content and want to see more, hit like and subscribe below. Constraints are a reality in our life, and there's really no way around that. But if we can decide to define them and bring them out into the open, they don't become the anchor and the full stop that they have to be. All we're attempting to do here is to bring them out into the open and get them down so we clearly understand what they are. They don't have to totally shut us down. And if defined properly, they can help us pivot into action. Wait a minute here. People like Oprah Winfrey do not have constraints. People like Paris Hilton do not have constraints. The Queen of England does not have constraints. But let me tell you something. Everybody in their life has constraints and whether you perceive them to be the most successful person or not, there's constraints there. It's just that they may not share them publicly, just like you might not share yours publicly. Remember, the most wealthy people, the most put together people, the people you admire most, your boss, whoever it is that you think there's no way they have constraints, not like my constraints, they have constraints. And it's not worth putting yourself in comparison with those people. The big difference with a lot of these successful people you look up to in your life is that they have probably navigated their constraints at some point. Some folks like Oprah are very open about their constraints and the things that have been challenges for them and how they've overcome them. So we do know it exists. Just remember, everyone's on their own path. It's not a comparison game. And this certainly is not a pity party. Please, please do not make this a pity party. This is not a list of woe is me, I cannot do this thing, I feel bad, Eeyore, Eeyore, Eeyore. We're not doing that. That's not what this is about. This is about just literally listing these things out. Make a list, my constraints are. My constraints are this, my constraints are that. Just get them out, that's all it is. We need to look objectively at ourselves and that's just part of this process. And think of it this way, a lot of these things are similar to other things in your life that you've thought were gonna be a big deal. You got there and it was kind of like, wow, that was not a big deal. That's how this will feel, a lot of them. Maybe some of them are a bigger deal, but that's okay too. The most fulfilling architecture project I ever worked on was full of constraints. And it was the constraints that made it rich. I know that seems weird, but let me elaborate on it a little bit. Ed's wife and his two sons were in a car accident where a truck driver fell asleep at the wheel and it ran over her car and it killed the wife instantly. It injured both boys, but one of them had a traumatic, traumatic brain injury uh, to the point where they didn't know what his function would be. Ed came to us months after this had happened, uh, after being months in the hospital, uh, wanting to build a house for his son that would enable him to function. The entire story is heartbreaking, but there was an opportunity there to make a house that was what you would call universal design, meaning persons of any capability can use the house, whether you're standing, sitting in a chair, or 
even if you're visually impaired, that there's clues around the property and through the house that change materiality. In addition to that, Ed felt a lot of responsibility to make the house green. So there was a hierarchy of choices to be made in that project at all times. The result of the project though was a property that fully functioned for his family. And it was extremely rewarding to the point where it brought me, brought me to tears to watch Matthew roll his chair through the property for the first time and see that he could use this property. Um, it, it really was the most rewarding job that I have ever been on. Take five minutes right now, right after this video, and I want you five or 10 minutes, write down your constraints. Don't overthink it. Just write down the ones that come to you. List them out. What are the constraints that you have in life that are blocking you from walking towards the person that you want to become? When you're thinking about the constraints, think about big lofty goals, think about small goals. Maybe it's, I really wanted to organize that closet, but I can't quite get to it because of this constraint. Or maybe it's that I want to go back to night school and become something else, but I can't quite get there because of X. Maybe it's that I want to totally change where I live and I'm tired of living on the East Coast and I want to move to the West Coast. So how do I make that happen and what's blocking me from doing that? Maybe it's that I want to be an actor, but I'm stuck being an accountant. Be conceptual. Allow your mind to really float and think about things that are outside of the box, that are big and small, and just put them on paper. List them out, five, 10, 20 items, and just keep them in your notebook. What we learned today is that constraints can be a pivot point or they can be an anchor. It's our choice, but by defining them and bringing them out to the open, we no longer allow them to anchor us. We define them and we find a way to work around them. I wanna end every episode the same, which is, I think it's really important. We spend so much of our day saying, I am too heavy and I am too slow and I am not this and I am not that and I am not that. And that little voice in our head is so incessant and also so normal. So I want you guys to pick three things every week and say something that you wanna be that you aren't quite yet. I am a huge success and I am really great at making these videos. There you go. Already, don't you feel better just by saying it? Even if you're not there, by saying it, you get yourself there a little bit closer. We have to keep on it. We have to keep at it. None of this can happen unless we push ourselves to do it. Nobody's out here doing it for us. Get out there and make it happen. <laughs>